Hello and welcome to this week's roundup by blockchaingamer.biz. Today is Friday, 14th of April, and I am your host, Jenny Jordan, and with me today is co-host and editor-in-chief on blockchaingamer.biz, John Jordan. Hello. Hello, how are you? How's it going? Yeah, good. <laughs> Friday again. Um, <laughs> Every week. So, yeah, that's right. Another week in the blockchain gaming world. So today we are going to talk about the top stories from this week. And the biggest news probably uh, launched is the Solana's Web3 phone saga that yeah. had its live stream launch yesterday. So what can we say about that one? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's one of these. I mean, it, I think the, um, the concept of a Web3 phone sort of, you know, Solana's, that's not the first to do it. There's sort of been various attempts over the years so there was I mean, way back in the day there was a phone called the finney phone that sort of had a, a cold storage hardware wallet built into it it sort of flicked up sort of you know back okay. in the mm. 2018 19 or something um so that sort of attempt and then there's been htc have had sort of various things and even samsung have sort of had various marketing sort of around web3 phones um but they've not been sort of um you know that focus. So the Solana thing is obviously very focused on Solana. Mm. So it you know, it yeah. comes from Solana. Um, so there's Solana Foundation, and then there's sort of, I think a separate company now called Solana Mobile, um, and they partnered up with an American um, mobile sort of startup who have a sort of quite high end sort of Android device. It's not that it's not the top end sort of now because it's been around for, for, for sort of a little, little bit, but um, it's a fairly good sort of bit of Android hardware if you're sort of worried about that sort of stuff. And then mm -hmm. what they've done is they've um, sort of uh, taken the uh, sort of software. They've, they've made like a software, they call it a stack. Um, and that basically means that the phone can interact with Solana blockchain in a sort of native manner. And then a separate thing related to that is they have a thing called the seed, the seed vault, which is basically yeah. a separate, separate bit of hardware, um, basically a chip that that holds the private key to a Solano wallet, Solano wallet, and it sort of holds it separately from everything else going on in the phone. So you can't even um, screen grab it from the, you know, the Android OS can't, the operating system can't sort of access it. So, so the, from a crypto, from a sort of crypto security point of view, you know, when you, when you sign a transaction using this phone, the transaction signed in the seed vault, which is not, which is sort of separate to the operating system. So it's much more secure. So from that point of view, you can think of it as sort of like a phone with an inbuilt sort of um, treasure or uh, um, ledger hardware wallet. So it's sort of interesting. Yeah. Um, lots of people are now using those sort of hardware wallets, but the problem with the, with using them is they're sort of, you know, they're extra bits of hardware you sort of have to carry around and not lose. And, you know, and this sort of has well, that's that. That's the thing, isn't it? If yeah. you lose that, then you're screwed. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you you always have, I mean, you, when you set up the phone, um, not that I've done it yet, but you know, you write, you write down the seed phrase like any other wallet. So you always have the, mm -hmm. the seed phrase. Um, but, but you have the sort of the, the, yeah, yeah, the security of it, of, of it being like a, you know, a very secure cryptographic device, uh, that signs everything in, in, you know, in this sort of special trusted environment. Uh, but then also it's your phone. So, you know, you can just, it's much more accessible. Um, and clearly mm -hmm. everyone has yeah, phones yeah. <laughs> now more than one, some people. Um, so. So the idea is, uh, you know, this this will be something that at least in the concept stage, I don't think they expect to sell very many. I think they're saying at the moment they're sort of sub ten thousand. You know, it's a hundred, it's a it's a thousand dollar phone, so it's not cheap. You know, you wouldn't buy this to get the best thousand dollar phone out there. If you want the best thousand dollar phone out there, you buy a you know a Pixel or a Samsung, or whatever. Um, but this mm. is sort of something for the crypto sort of guys. I, I guess one of the problems with it is it's taken them a while. So they announced it in July last year. And now it's shipping in obviously with April. So that's a bit of a gap. Um, and back then, sort of when they announced it, I mean, even then, so the sort of the, the, the sort of um, shine was coming off Solana a little bit. You know, its, it's token price had already come down a lot. Um, and it's obviously come down further since. Um, so I think at the, at the time, if they'd got it, if, they'd had, if the thing had been released in July last year, then lots of Solana sort of um, fanboys um, would have, you know, sort of lapped it up. Uh, whereas now, just you know, the Solana ecosystem is in a much different sort of state. I mean, there's still a lot of stuff going on there, but say a lot of the games are looking to go cross uh, cross chain, um, and there's just not that much activity now in Solana as there once was. So, so it's probably, you know, it's times passed a little bit. I guess the interesting bit is, does this kickstart other companies to sort of think about similar things? So, yeah. um, 
you know, I don't think the Ethereum Foundation is not going to make an Ethereum phone, but potentially, you know, there's 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 it's a differentiation for other phone manufacturers. So maybe, I mean, probably Google wouldn't do it, um, but potentially Google with their Pixel phones could go. Here's a special edition, you know, fifty thousand only, you know, uh, Ethereum phone from Google. You yeah. can sort of imagine that, and if people, if and if they did that, that would be sort of, um, you know, um, I think people would find that a lot more uh, attractive. I guess the problem now is just sort of Solana, maybe is going through a sort of down cycle at the moment, so so that will mm, maybe limit it. Something. So but I mean, but compared, yeah. personally, I think it's really cool, you know, to have, you know, to be at the moment when you, you know, you, a lot of sort of games can't get through the app stores because Apple and Google won't allow them to do yeah. things. Whereas this has its own app store, you know, people can developers can create like mo- native mobile games and you can just play the game you know and sign transactions as you as you would you know play a normal web 2 game you know there's no because the crypto is even built into it so so it's, it's an interesting sort of proof of concept i guess from that um, and i guess we'll see if if there's if, if that sort of sparks interest in other sort of companies um yeah yeah good good so uh, we've also had two prominent investments that we've covered on the page. We've got the India mobile game developer Mayhem Studios that's announced it's raised twenty million dollars to build out its underworld gang wars. Yeah, which is a battle real shooter. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that one? Yeah, so the, I mean, the Indian market's quite hot at the moment um, in crypto. I mean. It's, Obviously, um, Polygon is, you know, is, in general, is doing quite well. And Polygon is, is an you know, Indian-founded um, sort of company. Um, mm. So, uh, and obviously, you know, India is pretty good in tech. Uh, there's some government stuff still around crypto that the government doesn't is, is sort of un- unsure. I think a little bit about crypto, but it seems um, not too restrictive. Um, so anyway, yeah. So this game is a say it's a mobile battle royale game. They're super popular in India. Basically, at the, at the moment in the Indian mobile market. The sort of the really big genres are cricket games, <laughs> clearly, um, and battle royale shooters. So, so PUBG was really big in India, and there's been various Indian versions of sort of battle royale games. Mm. And this this uh, underworld gang wars is sort of a, a you know a sort of variation on that. Um, so we'll sort of see. I mean, twenty million is quite a lot um, for that game. Um, Sequoia India is obviously the Indian arm of Sequoia. Um, VC, who are like one of the best known sort of US VCs, who haven't done a lot of stuff in crypto blockchain gaming. Um, uh, so we'll sort of see. It's quite a lot of money, really. Um, yeah. At this stage in the market, uh, it, it's slightly there's a slightly sort of confusing thing from the investment point of view that this company, uh, Mayhem Studios, is owned by this other company called um, Mobile Premier League, which is a really big mobile company in india that does actually a lot of cricket games <laughs> um so so they're sort of it's sort of interesting that, that so the, the the mayhem studios is sort of like a subsidiary of of of, um, of, M, of mpl and sequoia india was one of the investors in the sort of parent company so um so it's not really new it is new money but it's not sort of new investors in all in, into the sort of corporation so so it's sort of one to to sort of look at i guess the other thing with indian games is you know, India is obviously a massive market, whatever, 1.4 billion uh, people. So is this game going to be sort of a game that's focused on the Indian market or is it going to be a international game? So and those are two quite different sort of um, businesses, I think. So um, to me, the game looks quite Indian <laughs> um, in the sense that the, the moment there's two gangs, and one's an Indian gang and one's a Russian gang, which is sort of interest, <laughs> interesting geopolitical <laughs> sort of positioning at the moment. Uh, yeah. But I don't think I don't think like many people in sort of North America necessarily will be, probably won't, won't want to play as Russians, and they might not be that interested in playing as Indians either. So so we'll see how the project goes. I think it's sort of fairly early days on it, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other investment was the strategic uh, investment from Starkware into oh, yeah. uh, the game Influence, uh, which is a space MMO that finds unstoppable games. Yeah. Um, so that's going to go on StarkNet, which is Starkware's layer two scaling technology. Yeah. Um, and Influence, or Influence also had a mint of Asteroids and Sway this week. Yeah. Can you tell us something about that game? Do you know anything? Yeah, so there, I mean, this is sort of playing into a lot of the stuff we've spoken about in recent weeks, which is lots of games choosing their L2 scaling solution. Um, yeah. 
So I don't think probably this wasn't like a vast amount of money. I wouldn't think the, it wasn't disclosed how much money had been invested, but I wouldn't expect it to be like an enormous amount. But it's, this is more like you know, influence have always influence already previously announced they're using stockware. So this is sort of like a yeah, yeah a sort of coming together yeah. um, of, of that. Um, yeah, it's, it's like one of one of these sort of space combat trading games. I mean, there's quite a few of them sort of out there. Um, and the sort of part of this, I guess the announcement happened because they were also, as you say, selling off some more asteroids. At the moment, the NFTs are on Ethereum and there's asteroids um, and sort of uh, ca characters in the game with pilots. Um, mm -hmm. And then they also have combined this with the first um, opportunity to buy the token. So the tokens are called Sway, ERC20 yeah. tokens. Um, and you have, you can... Um, you can spend for every asteroid or pilot NFT you have, you can spend $2,500 of sway. So it's sort of like an IDO, I guess, I, even like an ICO, I suppose. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. I think it's running for the, it's running for a week. So they've got a few, few days left. When I looked, they hadn't sold that much. I think they were like looking to sell like 1.5 million. Um, that was the sort of maximum cap. Um, and they were at still under a hundred thousand when I looked last. So, yeah, so I think I, they got about four days. Five yeah years to go and it's sort of i mean i quite like it as a project you know i've spoken to the guys there they're very committed to blockchain they're you know they're not game sort of uh, developers um you know like, sort of you know they're not they're not made other games before so they're coming at it from quite a crypto point of view which i quite like um often the problem with those games is quite hard for them to scale they, you know it's often they they're hard a bit of a bit harder games to get into for sort of more casual players um so it may be one of these games that's actually takes a bit bit longer to um sort of you know sort of scale up um and yeah. uh, i think it's i think if the launch is happening in the summer so we'll sort of see um, yeah yeah okay we've got some other release news as well the gala games legends reborn has gone into alpha fableborn is in post beta and then in the sandbox we have seen the olivex's fitness city being launched and mm. along with the dustland runner so that's the the move to earn coming into sandbox and we had some games on ultra as well being um being announced for the the live uh, global live launch on the 25th of april the born less on the blocks and uh, fur brawls uh, getting excited yep. about any of these <laughs> um yeah i mean it's, it, i think it plays back into uh, Again, something we've sort of spoken about in previous weeks, which is just there's just a lot of stuff going on at the moment. You know, there's uh, I don't think any of those are particularly notable in and of themselves, but I think as sort of taken as a whole, there's, there's just you know, I mean, the sandbox is just like loads going on in the sandbox all the time. They've got all these different events happening now. Um, as you mentioned, sort of gala games send out and they sent out a press, they sent out an email, and it was like about I don't know ten games, <laughs> you know, that they've got in various stages of sort of sort of you know, I don't know, open beta, closed alpha, whatever you know, whatever. There's just a whole bunch of stuff sort of, sort of happening at the moment in general across lots of different projects um and i guess yeah that's sort of good timing in the sense that you know this week nothing to do with gaming obviously the ETH price has, has sort of shot up and, and, and bitcoin's been sort of quite um high relatively speaking for for a sort of number of weeks now so i think yeah not to say the bear market's over at, at all yet but i think th there's two different things happening there's one there's one that's sort of the cycle of crypto prices which is more long term and then there's the sort of the the cycle of blockchain game projects sort of going live, which we always knew 2023 would be quite busy in terms of there was lots of projects that were started one or two years ago that were now sort of, you know, they would be coming to sort of some sort of release um, sort of uh, sort, sort of point. So so if those two things combine, then you could get sort of quite um, you could see some games getting very uh, sort of explosive growth as we sort of saw um say a year and a half or two years ago now i suppose with the sort of axi infinity not quite two years ago but that's that sort of time frame you know axi infinity was very much driven by a product that sort of was new at the time when everyone was interested and and underlying asset prices were were shooting up so when you have that you know, that's sort of when you have this sort of big um sort of boom period which is not necessarily good good for the market i suppose in the long term because it all if it all comes crashing down again but uh we'll, we'll see if it's different different this time <laughs> what do you think behind releasing so much and, and developing so many games is this is it kind of is it the hope that one of them might scale and get really big like um, you're talking to um, immutables uh, mm. robbie ferguson the other week and he he kind of said that didn't he that it just takes one of these games to get to uh, like a million users 10 million mm. users and 
And so, you know, why why aren't developers focusing on just one and doing that one game really good or that project? But why is it so much, do you think? Well, I think individual developers are more focused. Um, so I think there's different there's different sort of types of companies in the you know in, in the games industry, not just the blockchain games industry. So something like a yeah, you know, an immutable is you know is sort of like a publisher. So a publisher, you know, by definition will sort of want to um, publish a whole bunch of games. So they may they probably don't think like this, but one way of thinking about it is a publisher will go, well, I want you know we know I know what the genres that people like to play. People like to play racing games, RPGs, shooting games, strategy games. Yeah. And a match three game for the ladies, wasn't <laughs> apparently there, but you know, but, but but they sort of know the genres that are popular, so they they just want to go. We want to make one shooter game. They sort of go, well, you know, we know we want to have you know a, a few games in each of these sort of genres. Um, so so that that's how you know that's how people like you know I think that's how Gala think about it. I think that's how Immutable think about it. I think that's um, to a lesser degree probably a bit how Mythical think about it and, and Oasis. You know, those sort of blockchain platform type things. They, they want to have they don't want to have hundreds of games. I mean, that's sort of, you know, that becomes too hard to sort of handle. But they, they want to, for publishers, it's, they always feel it's, it's, it's always hard for them to say no to another sort of, if a game's of a certain quality, if you've got 10 games and another good one turns up, why wouldn't you go, you know, 11, you know, or yeah, 12 or, or, or 19, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so, and I think there's just, you know, over the last two years, there's been a lot of money's gone into, into, you know, into the sector and there's lots of developers. You know, there's millions of individual game developers in the whole games industry. So it's just in, mm. in general, there's you know, there's never been more games in the game sector. So a very small percentage of those are Web three games, and that's still quite a lot of games. So, um, mm. so I think it's just a, it's, a, it's just almost like an outworking of of time that you know the last two two years, lots of games companies have said this Web three stuff looks interesting. Let's make something. Mm. And it takes them a year to make something, and obviously a whole bunch of them don't make that that you know don't actually actually even get released and a whole bunch of them do get released and, and not very good and and there's you know it's like a pyramid sort of thing going on there and, and, and you know, hopefully what we'll see you know for the rest of this year is is the sort of the better quality ones that took a bit longer you know we have like 50 i think in our most anticipated sort of sort of list mm, um, yeah. on, on the big indie list on, on the big uh, blockchain game list you know and, yeah. and 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 those are sort of the the ones that really sort of stand out and have had the most investment in and and, and they're the i guess you know the, the the ones we're looking at more keenly yeah, 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 that's right. And that takes us nicely into the game of the week mm -hmm. this week, which is Mojo Melee, uh, auto chess battle game that we've been playing in alpha, but now they've just released that very soon they'll be going into open beta. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so, so you play through the tutorial, which is uh, available on the alpha do you want to explain uh, is it, and... is it your your first your first auto chess game so do you want to explain to people what auto chess are they, they didn't know yeah yes um well it's basically where you get the the board up uh, the arena uh, and you choose your characters you choose where to place them and you get certain limited time to choose which characters you want to play and they have different abilities and, and equipment and uh, so far, you've been able to equip them with the, what are they call the stones. Um, oh, the, um, yeah, spell stones, I think. Spell stones, yeah, that's right. Uh, and you can also place meteorites on the opponent's um, uh, board arena. So, and then it's basically auto chess means you don't you just watch the battle go on. Mm. It takes a minute. So I like that <clears throat> fact that the matches are quick. Um, yeah, my children have gotten involved in it, like the characters and like the quick, quick battles as well. So it's a, it's an uh, immersive game from that point of view, and yeah, I just really like the experience uh, of it. Um, mm. So excited to see where Vita, how how that will be different. It comes with with a few uh, um, battle pass kind of. Um, yeah advancements doesn't it and also this release of special nft battle um, beta nft um so yeah i mean i think what can you of... tell us about that game it's by yeah. planet mojo by the way uh yeah. which is which is sort of the wider metaverse um, mysterious alien world um mm. project uh, so the characters 
obviously, yeah, alien-like kind of creatures, and uh, look really cute and funny. Um, by uh, the developer Mystic Moose. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to tell us about the game? Yeah, I think again, it's sort of you know it goes back to exactly what we were saying. Where you know, I mean, I know, I've known those guys for quite a while. Yeah, they've been making games for thirty years, so they've made you know, PC games, mobile games, VR games, mm -hmm. any sort of you know, <laughs> any sort of game you you choose to pick, they've made, sort of made it. So, so they know how to make games, and now this is their first sort of blockchain game. But you know, that project was announced probably about two years ago now. Um, so the NFTs have been out for almost a year um, mm -hmm. on Polygon. So um, you know, they sort of know how to make a make a you know, a, a game, as you say, that's sort of well crafted and sort of nice sort of artwork characters and, and you know, mm -hmm. yeah. you know PvP auto chess, which is you know, it's interesting, quite a few blockchain games are doing that sort of auto chess thing. Alluvium, one of Alluvium's games is auto chess and, and uh, it's it, um uh, what are they called? Um Eternal Dragons on, on Solana, again another mm -hmm. game we like yeah. is a sort of an auto chess game. So they are quite nice as you say because they are quick and they are you just basically place your characters down, make some strategic decisions about sort of leveling up um and, and then you sort of let the thing sort of play out so so it's, it's sort of very fast and and um yeah we actually work really well on a phone actually but <laughs> not on well, Solana, I've played, so. well i've played some some other auto chess games actually try try the early versions of them and they're very very slow and compared to those yeah. uh mojo melee is very fast and mm. the speed of it is just very um attractive i think it's because sort of you don't no definitely yeah and I think as well, it, you know, we'll, we'll sort of see there is that sort of balance of sort of not, I mean, casual is probably the wrong word, but, but you know, accessibility of like playing lots of games. Mm -hmm. And then you have these because these assets, you know, um, some of them will be NFTs, you know, as you say, there's sort of different um, sort of battle passes. So there's a free battle pass and then they'll be paid to get a you know, better premium battle pass. We all know about that from stuff like Fortnite. Um, so they're sort of they're sort of mixing up quite a lot of well-known um, sort of, you know, Web2 monetization retention models with some web3 stuff as well when it comes to you know a yeah, token well, and, and the, nfts yeah. and if it's and like an e e sports thing. if you like if you like the game there are yeah. those those more premium yeah. battle passes you can get and and if you feel like you're still a beginner and fairly new to it you can just stay, stick, mm. stay on this sort of uh, yeah uh, simple level yeah 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 so that's it from us this week and Remember to go on our website, blockchain.biz, to check out our stories and go on our Twitter, bcgbiz, and follow us there so you don't miss out. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.